Okay, we're seated here with Eddie Moffat, the uh, world-class unicyclist of, of uh, Indianapolis fame. And uh, we're going to spend a few moments talking about him and, and uh, that which makes him who he is. But there's the unicycle he rides right there. We prefer to be used as it joins my high wheel bike that uh, um, is also waiting for me to get on and, and uh, knock around with. We're gonna ask Eddie first question we're gonna say, we're gonna put forth to him is, Eddie, how old were you when you got into unicycles? I think I was about nine, nine or 10, not sure exactly. Weren't you saying that your sister had a picture of you doing pirouettes on one at 10? Yeah, when I was 10, 73, so. That's why I think I probably started when I was nine. Okay. Because I had some skill at at ten. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, and then, how long did you were you a consistent uh, unicyclist? Um, probably about five years from there. So nine until fourteen. Yeah, probably until fourteen, fifteen, <coughs> and then I had to concentrate on my ballet training. So I kind of dropped the unicycle. <coughs> Concentrating your ballet training. Tell us about that. What, 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 what do you mean by that? Well, trying to get several classes a day in. Um, if you're going to be a professional, you have to train, you know, and you got to train hard. So, taking two, maybe three classes a day. And in Southern California? Yes. Where? San Pedro is where I started. You started ballet in San Pedro? Really? San Pedro, did they have much of an active ballet community? Uh, it was small. This were um, famous ballerina, what's her name? Um, with ABT. Oh shoot, can't think of her name now. Uh, she's from Pedro. Pedro, you call P San Pedro Pedro? Yeah. Got it, okay. Yeah. If you're from Pedro, just call it Pedro. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, then you moved to San Francisco. You danced with a ballet company there, is that correct? A youth ballet company, yes. Okay. Ballet Celeste International. And where were they in, in the grand scheme of things, in terms of rankings, I guess we could say? Well, they were a special school because they were a performing arts school. So you had your academics in the AM, and you danced in the afternoon, and you toured, and you got to perform. So. That's really a, quite a special school. You know, you're not going to get that, uh, a performing arts school like that anywhere. And you, know, and you weren't unicycling then? No more unicycling, yep. I focused on my, I had to if I want to get a job. You know? Then you moved on to, uh, let me back, back up for half a second here. You say you toured, what do you mean toured? Um, so we toured Nutcracker, you know, you're getting on a bus and you're, packing up your sets and your costumes and you're going out on the road. That's, you know, you're on a ballet tour. So you were doing Nutcracker, in other words? Yes, Nutcrackers and other, other ballets. How many Nutcrackers have you done in your life? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds? I'm not sure exactly how many. All over the world, right? It's in the hundreds. <laughs> All over the world? Um, in quite a few places. Yeah, huh, awesome. And then um, you moved on from uh, San Francisco. What was your next stop? Uh, Cleveland. Got my first job with Cleveland Ballet uh, at 18. And tell us, how high of a notch ranking was Cleveland, Cleveland's ballet? I think Cleveland was probably one of the top five companies in the at world? that time in the U.S. In the United States, yeah. okay. Um, and that was the early 80s. So, uh, it was a pretty high ranking company. So, they were one of the top ranking companies in the world. And uh, um, I understand their Nutcracker was one of the best in the world. In my opinion, yes. It was a very, very elaborate, expensive production with great choreography, great costumes. Um, <clears throat> it was the best one I've ever seen or been in <clears throat> since then. So. so why'd you leave? I had wanted to go to Europe. I had always wanted to dance in Europe. Yeah. So... I bought a one-way ticket to Germany. And did you know that you were going to have a dance position when you got there? I had no idea. 
No. Just, just took a chance. Really? Went over there and got a job. And then a weeks. you got hired by the German government. Is that correct? Well, it's the theater, but it's government sponsored. So uh -huh. I got hired hired by the director. Yeah. Herr Dobrejovich uh -huh. is his name. But um, the ballet in Germany is it's sponsored by the state. Okay. So, like I, I think I told you this before, they don't you don't have to fundraise. You know, your your salary is paid by the the state of Germany or the country of Germany. And still no unicycle. Um, that's where I started. I rediscovered it, and I think it was 1983. And it was what a unicycle hanging in a bike shop or something like that. Yeah, in a bike window. Uh huh. And at what age were you at that point? I was 23 years old. 23 years window. old. Yeah. Wow. And you've been nonstop ever since. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, that's about all we have time for today, Eddie. Thanks for spending some time with us, and. Talk to you again soon. Bye, guys. Peace out.